should I just take it from the top? Okay. Hi, my name is Jennifer and I have multiple sclerosis. So my understanding of multiple sclerosis is that essentially it's your immune system attacking your central nervous system. Those attacks can be on your brain or on your spinal cord. In my case, I have lesions on my spine. Um, so that's the version of, or you know, that's how I get my attacks, I guess. This is all new to me, um, so forgive me. So it really started in 2020. I was diagnosed with transverse myelitis, which is an inflammation of the spinal cord. I was told that it could progress to MS, but by definition, multiple sclerosis is multiple attacks. So at that point, it couldn't be diagnosed as multiple sclerosis. But that's really when it started for me, when I started to see, you know, weird symptoms. I have a detailed blog post that I'm going to link down below. I apologize, I would love to get into details as far as what was happening, you know, for me back then, but it's just been a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind then, and then, you know, things kind of slowed down or died down for me, and then they kicked back up in 2023, so my memory is not as good with details, but that blog post is as detailed as I can get as far as what I was experiencing then, and then my course of action, um, what followed. So again, I'm gonna link that down below. So I do have to cut in here and let you know that this video was filmed in multiple parts. Initially, when I sat down to record this video, I was getting ready for my appointment with my MS specialist. I was really anxious about that and I was having really bad brain fog. I was having trouble like jogging a timeline of events to try to give you an idea of how things started for me in 2020, which is why I keep referencing, look at the description, um, box for information or a direct link to that blog post, but I am going to be filming another part as well. In order to fully understand where we are and where we're going, we have to understand where it all started, which is why in part two of this video, I'll be going over my first signs, my misdiagnosis, and the start of my journey. So again, check the description box for updated information, but in this video, I'll be covering my second relapse and flare-ups symptoms that I started experiencing, which led to my diagnosis in 2023. My symptoms returned or I started to get new attacks in the summer of 2023. Well, the summer of 2023 is when I took action. Honestly, I can't remember when it started, but it was last year. As I'm recording this, it's January 2024, which is why I'm saying last year, 2023. Um, what that felt like for me was I started to get jolts on my side um, kind of like my abdomen area, I started to get jolts and it would feel like a tingling, which would eventually turn into like a numbness or a numb feeling. I had trouble kind of describing what it felt like, so I just kept calling it an internal itch. I made a TikTok video kind of asking people, at the time I was exercising, um, and I, I asked people, I was like, hey, like when you're working out or just in general, do you ever get like an internal itch or like a, a jolt or a tingling feeling? It was really, you know, just like an innocent question that I had. I never suspected that it would lead to this diagnosis, but we'll get to that later. Um, but again, that's how it really started off for me. My husband was like, well, maybe you pulled something, you know, again, I was doing light exercising. I was walking every day and then I was doing like some abdomen workouts and he was like maybe you pulled something when you were doing your ab workouts or you know turning with weights or something and I'm like okay but I know what a pull or a strain feels like and this is a different feeling like it's not it's not painful it's just very uncomfortable and it's jarring like it's really shocking it literally felt like a shock and like I said it was like a tingling and then like a numb feeling um, so as time went on, I continued to have the, this problem. It wasn't all day, every day, but it was pretty persistent as far as I would at least experience it, um, if not every day, like a few times a week where I would just get that jolt and then like the tingling stayed. Um, and so I was like, all right, let me get to the doctor. You know, it was the middle of summer. I had my kids home with me. 
So I told myself, I was like, when they go back to school, I'm definitely going to visit my primary and figure out what's going on with me. So I did, um, I set up an appointment, like the day after they went back to school, I went to see my primary and I told her what I was experiencing and she was like, hmm, that shouldn't be happening. Let's get you an x-ray. So it started with an x-ray, an x-ray turned into an MRI, an MRI turned into an MRI with contrast. That turned into another MRI with contrast because they were kind of questioning what they were seeing. They saw some abnormalities, but I guess they just, you know, wanted to check again. So I got two MRIs with contrast. That turned into a spinal tap. Now, of course, I'm fast forwarding this process, but each imaging was probably about a week to two weeks apart from each other. So mind you, I'm still getting the tingles and the numb feeling. And now at this point, I'm getting a little concerned because my imaging and my tests are coming back as abnormal and I'm reading the notes and everything and at this point it's really just the waiting game but again I'm I'm fast tracking it just to kind of give you an idea of what I had to do in order to come to this diagnosis so I'm getting my imaging I had the MRI the MRI with contrast twice I had um, a spinal tap I want to say I had some other imaging and things done as well in between there but there was also something else going on like they noticed nodules on my thyroid not real at least i don't think it's relevant to this but i think that's kind of why i'm getting things kind of it was a blur to be honest with you it was a blur it's a lot going on at once um but so i got my spinal tap waited for what felt like forever for the results i also got extensive blood work done because my neurologist who i by this time had started to see as well because I realized well it's probably like a nerve issue and it could be linked to what I was experiencing three years ago my primary did recommend you know what you should follow up with your neurologist which I'm happy that she did so I did that and again by this time I'm kind of meeting with the both of them going back and forth between appointments and imaging and testing and getting things done um, so I had a, extensive blood work as well because my neurologist said there are some illnesses or diseases that could mimic MS. So we kind of want to rule those things out. So I did the blood work, I did the spinal tap, and I think with those two together, like using, you know, the results of those two together, he was able to come to the con confirmation that it is multiple sclerosis. That's where we are now. I received that diagnosis at the end of 2023. Again, it's January, which is why I say it's all new. I literally met with an MS specialist yesterday a different doctor but at the same practice so my neurologist who is amazing by the way I was really sad to leave his care but he told me hey like I'm transferring you to the care of someone who is like the MS specialist at our practice he's amazing you're not if anything you're doing yourself a disservice by not transferring to his care so I trusted him because again I really love my neurologist and I've been working with him for years I transferred to this new specialist which I met for the first time yesterday and he seems great he seems great as well but the appointment was a little overwhelming just because you know i'm trying to take in all of this information i'm trying to understand the type of ms that i have the potential of what could happen the difficulty with ms is that no one has a crystal ball it's kind of one of those illnesses where it's like wait and see you know kind of wait to see what happens everyone is impacted differently you can have someone who has a very mild case you can have someone who has a very aggressive and more you know severe case it really is difficult and no one can predict what's going to happen now the likelihood of my type of ms leading to the point where i could be debilitated or you know a little less mobile is higher because I'm getting attacks on my spinal cord. And again, this is all new, so I'm just trying to process and understand what I was told. But based on what the, the neurologist and the MS specialist told me was if you're getting attacks on your brain, you know, if you're getting attacks anywhere on your brain, there could be, you could get an attack on your brain to where you're not even gonna notice effects because your brain is larger. Whereas with your spine, you know, everything is kind of compact in one area, so, it really doesn't have it doesn't have that opportunity to kind of attack and it doesn't cause a lot of damage if that makes sense and i'm not downplaying anyone that has lesions on their brain that's definitely just as scary just as um just as like a big deal you know and it could be very aggressive just depending on how many lesions that you have on your brain 
But again, my understanding is that just because of where the spine is, because everything is so close together, you don't have more opportunity to kind of hit a spot where you won't notice symptoms. Um, the likelihood of things changing for me is, is very high. So that's scary to hear, but at this point, you know, I'm not focusing on that. I'm really just focusing on, okay, what do I do from here? So my action plan from here is it was recommended that I start Ocrevus infusions and that's something that I'm researching now and I'm looking into, I did receive the pre-authorization from my insurance company. So at this point, it's really just a matter of me scheduling with a nurse and kind of starting. Um, yeah, so I had those conversations with my neurologist. I had those conversations with my husband and he, you know, thinks that it's a good idea that I start the infusions. I asked the specialist yesterday, I was like, do you think that the risk of me doing nothing is higher than the risk of me taking this medication and having like adverse side effects? And he was like, absolutely. Like without a doubt, you doing nothing is detrimental to your health. Like it's, it's a lot more risky than you taking this and maybe getting like a rash at the infusion site or like an itchy throat after you take the infusion or, or something of that sort. And of course, I go back and forth with it, honestly, because I don't fully trust in <laughs> this. This sounds really bad, but I don't want to say that I don't fully trust in modern medicine. But um, I had a really bad reaction with Depirami, which is an anti-seizure medication that was in 2020. Again, the, the blog post is going to be linked down below, but I had a really bad experience with that and then coming off of that medication. So I am traumatized and I'm very afraid to do any medication that is not like ibuprofen, <laughs> to be honest with you. I am not thrilled and I am a little nervous about starting this medication but if a medical professional is telling me that the likelihood of me doing nothing is more dangerous than me taking this medication I guess I have no choice but to kind of have faith in that and believe that and just pray about it so that's where I am now now when I met with the MS specialist yesterday he also recommended that there is a test that and again, this is new, but my understanding is that it's a type of blood work test. Through this blood work, they can give you like a risk profile, like a number, and kind of track the likelihood of you getting symptoms or the likelihood of you progressing or regressing in a certain way. So that's something that I'm gonna look into. Um, that is something that the MS specialist is recommending that I do as well, just to give him a better understanding of my case specifically and track my journey. If anyone has experience with this, I would be so grateful for you to share your experience or you know any information that you have in regards to this. Of course, I'm gonna do my own research as well and I implore you to do the same. That's also, the, this is also the perfect opportunity for me to mention, which I should have started with. I'm not a medical professional. I am just a person on the internet sharing my experience. Please, please, please do your own research. I really just came here to share my experience with you in hopes to help someone and to encourage you and inspire you to just be really in tune with your body and to have a team of professionals on your side that advocate for you. If I didn't go to my primary, I would not be where I am today. And if I went to my primary and she didn't take my concerns seriously, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today because I could have gone to a doctor and they just say, oh, you'll be fine and threw some muscle relaxers at me or you know, not listen to my concerns fully. And I'm super grateful to my primary for that. So again, the purpose of me, you know, sharing this video is really just to share my experience and to inspire someone to advocate for themselves, take their health seriously, listen to your body, be in tune with your body, and just take care of yourself. I'm not going to turn this into an MS channel. You know, this is a video that is not like any of my other content. I really just have the intention of helping someone. This is not, I don't want pity, I don't want empathy, I am fine. If you are my family, if you're a friend, please like 
you don't have to check on me more often than you already do. I'm fine. I want to live and I'm going to live as normal a life as possible. I'm not going to make this my story. I'm just a woman, a black woman who happened to have been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and that's completely fine. I'm, I'm completely fine, I promise. But again, I'm not going to turn this into an MS channel. I'm going to focus on my same content, but I really wanted to bring this to my audience as well and my community just to let you know that because I do have this autoimmune disease and because I'm being more open with sharing different aspects of my life, this is likely going to be sprinkled into my content. If you have questions about signs or symptoms or you know the course of action that I took I'm happy to help that's what I'm here for I love you guys and take care of yourself I'm blessed to be in the position to where I can share my journey with other people and I'm welcoming of any community or any support anyone that feels like they need to reach out because they have questions or they feel like they're alone on their journey. That's something that I've always been very proud of, you know, just to share my experiences in the hopes that I'm helping someone, whether it's hair care tutorials or, you know, life as a mom, my migraine journey, now my multiple sclerosis journey. I'm just very blessed to be in a position to where I can use this platform to possibly help somebody else. So that is really, the main intention or the main reason why I decided to share my story. It doesn't end here. It's really just beginning and I'm really excited to... I'm, I'm really excited that I have answers and now it's just, okay, what next? I have no problem with sprinkling content in here and there, but again, that's not my story and I'm not... I'm so much more than that. So, yeah.